right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2015 Chrysler 200C. Up front is a 3.6 liter V6 and down below is a nine speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here 200C for a couple of reasons. First of all, I've never done a Chrysler 200 and the Chrysler 200 didn't last all that long, at least in this generation, which is the second generation. So I'm excited to talk to you guys about that topic today. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers like this retro sticker pack or big friggin' bottle sticker, both with free shipping. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 3.6 liter V6 under the hood. Well, there were two engine options. There was a smaller four cylinder, a two liter, and there was this bigger option, the 3.6. The 200 had a couple of trim levels with C actually being the highest. The 200 C is actually the highest trim level for 2015. And so this has pretty much almost all the bells and whistles We'll talk about later with the interior, but that V6 is definitely part of it. It does have a nice power band to it, makes 295 horsepower, which is pretty respectable for a smaller vehicle like this. This wasn't nearly as big as their 300, which was a more luxury full chassis car. This was the smaller one. This was a more entry level Chrysler. And so to get that V6 is a nice perk. Like I said, paired to it, nine speed automatic transmission. FCA used this transmission a lot in this era. And actually, at least here in 2022, they still use it quite frequently. It's fine. I don't notice it shifting all that much. I've heard some people have issues with the nine speed. However, I haven't had any in my experience. Last but not least, this year 200C is front wheel drive. However, that is the only option this car does not have, which is the all wheel drive system that could have been had on the 200. Kind of interesting that they made these all wheel drive. Did not know that. But with that out of the way, let's talk about this interior. Like I said, the 200C was the top trim, so we have a lot to talk about. Well, in front of me, I have two physical gauges and a screen. On the left is my tachometer. On the right is my speedometer. And in the center, I do get that screen that is pretty customizable. I do like this from FCA. And I think it's very, very colorful, which makes it feel really nice, at least just nicer than I would have expected out of a vehicle like this. It's also full size. So it takes up most of the gauge cluster. Again, something I didn't quite expect. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my selectors for that gauge screen, as well as my phone options. And on the right, I have my cruise control settings. This does come with radar cruise control, which is fantastic. Very nice feature for 2015. And I do have paddle shifters around the back of the steering wheel. The steering wheel does feel nice, has a good weight to it. However, it's not too heavy. It's not too light, pretty solid. Down below those paddle shifters around the back, I do have radio skip track and volume buttons as well. This is a pretty typical Chrysler Jeep Dodge thing to do to put the volume and skip track on the back of the steering wheel. Off to the left, I do have a big climate control vent and the headlight and gauge dimmer switches. And then on the door, I have two different memory seat options. Very, very nice. As well as this nice wood paneling you'll find throughout the rest of the interior. Really do like that. And then I have my power mirrors and power windows as well as power locks on the door. Moving into the center, we do have the pretty classic FCA infotainment system. A couple things to note in here are the heated and ventilated seat options. Again, this top trim gets ventilated seats. Very, very happy about that here in summer. However, I still do retain physical climate controls. We'll talk about that in a second. And here is the backup camera. This screen is slightly dated by 2022 standards. However, back in the day, this was actually pretty neat. I like it a lot. Down below that, I do have my parking assist on as well as parking sensors on and off, lane keep assist and pre-collision warning on and off. This car is pretty loaded with safety features, which is fantastic. Moving on to the center console itself, we do have traction control and screen off in the center, but then mostly we get our climate controls taking up this middle area, which is fantastic. I love the fact that the 200 still has physical climate controls and not just ran through the screen. So in case anything ever happens to the screen, you could still change your temperature, unlike in the Durango, which actually became an issue. However, as far as climate controls, nothing crazy besides dual zone climate very nice then we have the shifter and handbrake the shifter is the rotary style shifter 
that FCA has been using for quite some time. Turn it all the way left for park, all the way right for drive, neutral, and reverse, things like that. I'm not the biggest fan of it. However, I've just come to learn to live with it. And so my complaints stop there. Then we have a pretty interesting center console. So up top, we do have cup holders. So let's do a big friggin' bottle test here in the 200C Chrysler from 2015. And unfortunately, it goes in slightly, but then won't go the rest of the way. So it looks like it wants to pass. I really wanted it to pass, however, Unfortunately, the 2015 Chrysler 200C fails the big friggin' bottle test. However, that's not it for the center console. It does have a little party trick. You pull this tab and bring it back and then you get this giant storage area. I have my USB in and 12 volt outlet, fantastic. You could probably fit a rotisserie chicken in here, which is great in case you want a snack on the road. And overall, I think it's a really, really great use of space by Chrysler. Speaking of which, I do still get an armrest that opens up to a center console, which is really, really nice. Moving on to the seats, the seats are power, ventilated and heated, as well as memory. So they have everything you want from a modern vehicle. They are comfortable. They are finished in this nice premium leather. And overall, I'm enjoying my butt experience here in the 200C. Speaking of seats, however, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2015 Chrysler 200C and a couple of things to note back here. First of all, knee room a lot better than I thought it was going to be, especially because this is a more luxurious Dodge Dart. Headroom, not fantastic. I do have this little bump here, and when I sit, it's not the most annoying thing in the world, but definitely I start to feel my hair starting to hit the ceiling. The other big complaint that not only I have, but a lot of other people have, is that the rear door shape isn't really that nice to human beings. It's a very odd shape. It's a very slim opening. So getting into the back seats is not that pleasurable of an experience. Once I am back here, I'm decently comfortable, minus the hair touching the ceiling. And I do have a center console back here, two cup holders and a little storage bin. I do also have vents back here. Very nice to see that in a smaller sedan because I didn't ever think about that. And then I drove a bunch of people to a wedding a couple days ago in my Mazda 3. It was 100 degrees outside and I have no rear vents in my Mazda 3. So they were boiling, I was freezing up front, not a good thing. So the fact that I get my own rear vents, very, very big. Let's go hop around back. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the 200C. I can hit it twice and it does pop the trunk open. And once we are back here, actually very big trunk. Very happy to see that on this size of vehicle. Again, I keep mentioning that. I always feel like the 200 is smaller than, well, it actually really is. It actually has great space back here, which I'm pleasantly surprised at. Now we gotta talk about the looks. And I like the look of the 200C. It definitely looks a lot better than its chassis mate, the Dodge Dart. And overall, I do think it has this sort of classy appeal, and I think it's aged rather gracefully over the last seven years. Is it my favorite car in the world? No, but that's okay. Not every car has to be. Speaking of this car, however, let's get on to my final thoughts. First, we'll talk about how I feel about this car, and then we'll talk about sort of the history and ideas behind the 200C. Well, in all honesty, I think this is a great car. It's luxurious, it has great features. However, the owner, Kevin, did have some reliability issues when he first bought this car about a year ago. A suspension clunk that stumped a couple of local dealerships, a mysterious check engine light came on as soon as he left the lot, and the sunroof leaks a little bit, which might lead to wiring issues down the road if there's any resistors or chips up in the ceiling. I know that was an issue for Pontiac G6s in the mid 2000s with sunroofs. So can I recommend buying this car? If you could get a good deal, I would say if you could find a decent one, low mileage in your budget, sure. This car was very short lived. They only made these for three production years, 2015 being the first year, 2016, then they killed it for the 2017 model year. When this first year of the second generation came out, 2015, almost right after it came out, the FCA CEO at the time said, we're gonna let the 200 run its course, but it's not getting a third generation and it's not gonna last long. From the gate, from the jump, FCA had no faith in this car. They had spent actually 
billions of dollars developing this platform. And the CEO said this was one of their biggest financial failures in recent history. And so on December 2nd, 2016, production of the 200 ended with just a handful of 2017 models being made. The factory was then retooled to build FCA's most popular product, the Ram trucks. And so FCA doomed this car right from the jump, which is ironic because this year, 2015 for the 200, sold over 170,000 200s. That's not a small number. So I think personally, Chrysler shot themselves in the foot by getting rid of this car. I think if they would have pushed it harder and added more entry levels, it could have really been something. I like sitting in this car. I enjoy driving this car. Yeah, it has some mechanical issues and it's an American Chrysler product that comes with the territory. But actually as a car, this isn't bad. And now Chrysler is holding on by a thread. They really only make the Pacifica, which shares a chassis with this car actually. And the 300, but the 300's days are numbered. As a matter of fact, I honestly can't even tell you if it is still in production. I think it is. Editing Zach, can you please throw a title card up here saying if it's still in I don't even know. I, when was the last time you saw someone buy a new 300? Not in a while. This was Chrysler's last entry level car and when they canceled this in the Dart, I think it was a really monumental change for Chrysler. A monumental change, I'm not sure was for the better. The second gen Chrysler 200 was doomed before the first one even left the factory. The brand just didn't have any faith in it. And I think if they would have pushed it harder and stuck with it a little bit longer, maybe it could have been something. But then again, with the way sedans are disappearing from our roads, maybe they made the right call. Maybe they knew when to hold them and when to fold them. And unfortunately for the 200, they folded it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Kevin for letting me take out his Chrysler 200C. I've always wanted to drive one of these and I'm very thankful he was able to give me that opportunity. Kevin has been great to work with and I hope you guys enjoyed the 200. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.